Good afternoon, everyone. Let's start the today's class. Today, I'm going to talk about one of the important topic in pediatrics from the respiratory system, that is bronchiolitis. Very small babies are suffering from bronchiolitis. And when you visit any pediatric hospital, okay, you will see a lot of cases of pneumonia as well as bronchiolitis. So uh, please pay attention. This topic is important from the exam point of view as well. Now, let's introduce the topic. Bronchiolitis is an acute infectious and inflammatory disease of the lower respiratory tract, which results in obstruction of the small airway. So it is caused by infection. That infection leads to inflammation, especially in the small airway, and that leads to obstruction. So this is one of the example of obstructive airway disease, especially in very small babies. Now, bronchiolitis is the most common clinical diagnosis in infant who are hospitalized with RSV infection. This is respiratory syncytial virus. Okay. It is a type of RNA virus, which is very common in that age group. So the infection caused by RSV is bronchiolitis until proven otherwise. Sometimes this uh, bronchiolitis is very commonly confused with pneumonia and two are indistinguishable. So uh, what we do, we usually treat pneumonia with antibiotic. That's why even bronchiolitis is treated with antibiotic if you are confused what is the diagnosis. It's always better to be on the safer side rather than, you know, not treating the child. So this is an important point. We'll talk about this in management as well. Now, how common is it? Okay, how common is bronchiolitis? Although this disease may occur in all age group yeah but very small babies are affected like young infant and there is a reason why these young infants are more symptomatic than other because their airway is very narrow the bigger children or the adult they have larger airway and they can accommodate the mucosal edema well than the small infant so uh, there is inflammation because of infection Inflammation leads to edema formation. They, that inflammation also leads to increased mucus secretion. That can block the small airway quite easily than in the older children or adult. That's why it is very common in young infant. Male to female ratio is 1.5 to 1, so almost the same. Now, what are the causative agents of bronchiolitis? Respiratory syncytial virus or RSV is the causative agent. It is the most important one. It's an RNA virus and it belongs to Paramyxoviridae family. Just remember RNA virus. Now other organisms can also cause bronchiolitis apart from RSV and they are influenza, parainfluenza, adenovirus, rhinovirus and very rarely mycoplasma pneumonia as well. This is a bacteria. Even bacteria can lead to bronchiolitis, but that is absolutely rare. So whenever this question is asked, you can say viruses are the causes of bronchiolitis. And you're right. And we may ask you, what is the most common virus? The answer is RSV. Apart from that, other, other respiratory viruses like influenza, parainfluenza, adeno, rhino, coronavirus, and all these are important. Now, what's the pathophysiology of bronchiolitis? How it causes, you know, how those viruses leads to the disease. Now, all of these points are very, very important. So please pay attention here. Let me go slowly. There is inflammation. Inflammation is caused by infection. And during that infection, there is necrosis of the respiratory epithelium. So this is a quite early feature in bronchiolitis. So necrosis of the respiratory epithelium. Now remember, this epithelial tissue can regenerate itself. So in case of respiratory epithelium also, it can regenerate. So during that regeneration, okay, the 
in the beginning, the cilia are not developed. Cilia takes time for the development. So in the beginning, only epithelial cell will regenerate without cilia, and that impairs the elimination of secretions from the airway. This is important point. What does that mean? The secretion is collected in the small airway and it can itself block there. At the same time, because of the inflammation, there is proliferation of the goblet cell. These goblet cells are present in increased number in our airway. And in this case, they are even, you know, in high number and they can produce or secrete excessive mucus. This is an inflammation. So lymphocytic infiltration may result in submucosal edema. So this inflammation is causing edema. Excessive goblet cell which produce mucus is also leading to the collection there. Okay. At the same time, epithelium do not have cilia. So these all things combine together and leads to a lot of clinical feature in case of bronchiolitis. Now, the pathology results in obstruction of bronchioles by inflammation, edema, and cellular debris. This is the necrosed cells which are fallen into the lumen. All of these results in obstruction of the bronchioles. Now, that obstruction of the bronchioles will cause hyperinflation in that area of the lung which is supplied by that bronchiole. This is very easy to understand. Okay, hyperinflation. Now, how this happens? Listen carefully here. It all depends on what is the severity of obstruction. If it is completely obstructed, then that area will get collapse. There is no doubt. That is called atelectasis. That collapse is called atelectasis. It's a different type of concept. See here now. If it is completely blocked, okay, that area will. Uh, uh, decrease in volume, which is called collapse or atelectasis. It looks solid or solidified. But if it is, for example, there is one way, you know, traffic, it is a partially obstructed and it acts like a valve where only during inspiration the air is going there, but during expiration it is completely blocked. That can lead to hyperinflation of that particular area. This is called localized emphysema localized emphysema and it can easily lead to hyperinflation. That is one of the mechanism of hyperinflation. Another one is even more easier than that. The obstruction during expiration is more than in inspiration. That simply leads to collection of the air okay, during expiratory phase. This is another mechanism for hyperinflation in bronchiolitis. There is increased airway resistance or narrowing of the airway. And one very important point is there is ventilation perfusion mismatch. Now, ventilation is movement of the air. Ventilation means uh, inspiration and expiration together. And perfusion means the blood flow into the lung. Now, listen here very carefully. Okay, perfusion probably doesn't have any problem. Okay. Perfusion is happening well normally but ventilation is having problem here so whatever blood is going into the lung is not coming back from the lung with good amount of oxygen there because ventilation is not happening properly this is called ventilation perfusion mismatch and it leads to hypoxemia in the baby these infant have a small airway thus they are affected most often there's no doubt about it i already explained this and Recovery in this case begin with regeneration of bronchiolar epithelium after three to four days, but cilia do not appear up to two weeks. So full recovery may take more than or longer than two weeks duration. So this is the important point in bronchiolitis. Now, after you know knowing these things well, let's talk about. What are the risk factors of bronchiolitis in this small baby? Which, which type of babies can have this infection more commonly? Low birth weight baby, 
especially if they are premature. Low birth weight, especially if they are premature, that is an important risk factor. Another one, lower socioeconomic group itself. Crowded situation, okay? Crowded situation, especially in the daycare center or inside the home itself. Smoking by the parents or the grandparents or anyone, okay, who are near to the baby. Now, let me highlight this point because it is relatively important than other. This parental smoking or smoking by other people, this is called passive smoking for the baby, is very hazardous regarding the airway. Those cilia, they cannot function properly in the presence of smoke. Okay, So if cilia cannot uh, perform well, then any chance of infection is common. Chronic lung disease in the baby. One of the important example I can give is bronchopulmonary dysplasia, which is the complication of premature baby. Severe congenital or acquired neurological disease. Okay, neurological disease, congenital heart disease, as well as congenital or acquired immune deficiency diseases. All of these are high risk factors for the causation of bronchiolitis. Now, what are the common clinical features of bronchiolitis? Let's talk about it. Now, the clinical features okay, are mainly respiratory and because of hypoxemia. Incubation period is about four days, okay? but it may range from few days up to a week, but average is about four days. Now, what are the common symptoms? Rhinorrhea. Rhinorrhea is a nasal discharge, and this nasal discharge is watery or very thin. Along with that, sneezing is quite common. Rhinorrhea and sneezing. Cough is milder in the beginning, because in the beginning, uh, there is upper respiratory tract involvement, and later on only, there will be low respiratory tract involvement. So whenever uh, it is still in the phase of upper respiratory tract involvement, cough is milder. Fever is low grade, okay? This is a viral infection. Fever is usually low grade here. But that low grade fever is followed in three to four days by noisy breathing. Fever may still be there, but after that time, now noisy breathing will start. This noisy breathing is mainly a wheeze, okay? Because the smaller airway are narrowed here. So wheezing is the main noisy breathing. Rapid breathing, which is noted by the parents. And they may complain, my baby is breathing very fast. He was not breathing like that few days ago. It's a very important observation from them. And sometimes they also note, my baby is breathing with a lot of difficulty because they can not notice that thing in the baby. Okay. At the same time, mother may say or may complain, uh, he, was, he is not feeding well. Okay. It is difficulty or difficult to feed him these days. He is not sucking on uh, my milk or not feeding through the bottle or whatever, whatever way they are feeding. The baby has difficulty to feed because there is a faster breathing, there is a difficulty to breathe. So, feeding difficulty is an important symptom. Baby may become lethargy because of hypoxemia. Whenever hypoxia occurs, okay, a brain will also suffer. So, lethargy is a common symptom. In the beginning, the baby may be irritable, later on lethargic. And in a very severe cases where hypoxemia is excessive, there is even development of a cyanosis and that can lead to blue extremity or even okay, blue lips and blue tongue. Peripheral and central cyanosis both can happen, but that is a very severe cases only. In the milder cases, it doesn't happen. Those are the symptoms. Now let's go in, let's examine this child or this baby. Now respiratory system is examined under four headings: inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. So what are these uh, you know physical findings according to these four headings? In this case, remember this is a topic of bronchiolitis. Now 
on inspection we may see nasal flaring okay nasal flaring or flaring of ali nasi this is one of the sign of respiratory distress accessory muscles of respiration are in use especially sternocleidomastoid and trapezius okay this this is the meaning of accessory muscle uh, during this but uh, accessory muscle means so many other term but right now i mean sternocleidomastoid and trapezius they are in use tachypnea important feature this is a case of bronchiolitis so tachypnea is always there and we all know what is the respiratory rate in this baby remember the age group these are young infant okay young infant so first two month the respiration is up to 60 up to one year it is 50 and more than one year up to five year it is 40 so accordingly you can judge what is the a tachypnea or what is the normal range in this age group so if they it is more than 50 i i call it abnormal here nasal discharge is is positive or negative okay because it is present quite early supra and substernal recession is a feature of respiratory distress subcostal retraction again feature of respiratory distress intercostal recession or retraction another feature of respiratory distress intermittent cyanosis in severe condition only wheezing very prominent sometimes i don't even need my stethoscope to listen it when i enter into the room uh, the wheezing can be heard and grunting okay, grunting can also be heard in severely affected baby and this means the baby is struggling to breathe the baby is maintaining you know a bit of pressure to keep those alveoli open inside the lung and and this is the mechanism of grunting the vocal cords are partially closed and when the air moves into the lung through the partially you know uh, closed uh, vocal cord uh, grunting occurs now after inspection let's palpate the chest okay what are the important finding now during palpation there is decreased chest movement with respiration there is decreased chest movement with respiration because there is obstruction severe obstruction of the airway and there is not much air which is flowing inside decreased chest expansion which i can prove it okay by the measurement there is increase anterior posterior diameter of the chest now remember the topic of copd in adult the same thing we have discussed there especially in emphysema this is because of excessive air trapping inside the lung and this is known as barrel shaped chest okay the chest wall become rounded in this babies also the mechanism is same it it also has a lot of air inside the lung if we measure the temperature it may be high in the baby and one very interesting point is palpable liver okay palpable liver now see here this palpable liver is because of excessive you know distension of the lung the lung is pushing the liver downward so we can just feeling the liver we can just palpating the liver but actually this liver is not enlarged in size so we also call it push down liver but clinically it is very difficult for us to tell whether it is push down liver or really enlarged liver so for that okay we need to confirm it so how to do that so you start to percuss the chest okay you start to percuss the chest in right mid clavicular line you slowly percuss and come downwards when the upper border of the liver is rich that you know that resonant sound will change into dull sound because liver is a solid organ so it will become dull during percussion okay mark that area then continue to percuss on the surface of the liver okay and till you reach the lower border of the liver and how you know that is a lower border of the liver because that dull dull percussion note is again changing into the resonant one okay because i am reaching the abdomen now and there are bowels and bowels have ear inside so again dull sound will be changing into resonant sound so note these two area and measure it this is called liver span 
if this liver span is within the normal limit liver is not enlarged okay this liver is simply pushed down this is a very important uh, knowledge you know we should have because this type of questions can be asked in the exam now after uh, uh, palpation it's a time for percussion now uh, this disease is having excessive trapping of the ear inside the lung so there will be increase resonance sound increase resonance i can compare this with emphysema in adult or even even with pneumothorax sometime though pneumothorax will have hyper resonance okay uh, and it is increased resonance we say and the thing which i have just explained to you the liver dullness is pushed to lower than the normal this is also confirmed by percussion the final uh, part of the examination of the chest would be auscultation we use our stethoscope to auscultate and first thing is there is prolonged expiration because this is obstructive airway disease the problem lies more with expiratory phase there is diminished air entry bilaterally the air entry is diminished bilaterally this is very important one this is because of obstruction of the small airway very faint breath sounds are heard in case of severe condition if those airways are completely clamp if they are obstructed too much then no movement of the air so i cannot hear any breath sound this is a very critical situation fine crackles can also be heard because the infection may may have extended up to the alveoli so fine crackles can also be present there but wheezes are of course predominant than the crackles because this is the disease of smaller airway so if this question is asked if what do you think wheezes are more predominant or crackles are more predominant in case of bronchiolitis the answer is wheezes and in severe type of condition there is absence of the breath sound and you should not be happy that i cannot hear any wheeze or any crackles there or any movement of the air this is a very severe child and this child is usually in collapsed condition because of severe hypoxemia the child may be in unconscious state as well now after examining the child okay and after you you form the diagnosis let's talk about differential diagnosis what are the other condition which may present in the same way bronchial asthma is a well, important condition but it is you know uh, present slightly in older babies not in so young age okay and in bronchial asthma there are multiple recurrent episodes of hyper responsiveness and that can cause difficulty to breathe the mechanism is completely different here uh, these these are uh, of two types but allergic type of uh, bronchial asthma is much more common than other pneumonia i already talked this pneumonia and bronchiolitis so many features match with each other so many okay both present with tachypnea both present with respiratory distress maybe fever is there cough is there okay so it is a challenge for us to differentiate whether this is a pneumonia or bronchiolitis still there are certain things one is a uh, pneumonia if it is caused by bacteria there is high grade fever second let's do chest x ray in chest x ray if the lungs are hyper expanded okay probably this is a case of bronchiolitis and in pneumonia there are patchy infiltration here and there some patchy consolidation may be there third do the uh, cbc in pneumonia if it is caused by bacteria the neutrophilia would be there in bronchiolitis usually it is caused by viruses so nothing like that so this is how you need to give explanation another maybe whooping cough whooping cough whooping cough is caused by bordetella produces okay so some of the clinical feature may match congestive heart failure very important differential diagnosis there is no fever in heart failure but other features may may match with each other like cough may be there difficulty to breathing may be there right during uh, auscultation crackles are heard even wheezing wheezing can be heard in uh, a cardiac failure because of edema of the airway so these are important points
and one more is a foreign body aspiration foreign body aspiration it is usually unilateral okay unilateral or one side of the lung is affected and only one area of the lung may be affected but it all depends on how big is the foreign body so we cannot say anything and one important history is the mother or the father says okay that or give that typical history so these are differential diagnosis now what are the investigation you like to order so we do certain lab test and these are the important lab test now so here the total count may range from 8000 to 15000 uh, this is just one example i am providing here it can be anything it can be 10000 in in other baby or maybe 12000 like that okay but if we do differential count uh, there may be lymphocytosis because this is mainly a viral illness if i do elisa okay in 85 to 90% of the time that antibody may be seen and viral culture can be done but it is rarely done in clinical practice another important type of investigation is chest x ray now when we do chest x ray we can see this finding hyper lucent lung field means excessive air trapping inside the lung and that that will you know produce very black coloration of the lung okay? more blacker than the normal there are areas of atelectasis which may be present okay areas of atelectasis which may be present there chest infiltration in the perihilar region which is typical in viral infection diaphragms are pushed down because of hyperinflation of the lung diaphragm become flat we can see that and with the help of chest x ray some other differential diagnosis can be ruled out like foreign body or inhalation of foreign body heart failure or congestive heart failure and pneumonia these are important differential diagnosis which can be ruled out by chest x ray because the findings are different now look at this uh, x ray here okay it is providing a lot of information to us so let me explain this see here, these are peri hilar infiltrate peri hilar infiltrate this is the hilum of the lung so this infiltration is occurring right at the hilum or near to that peri hilar infiltrate okay now how i know this lung is hyper inflated i need to count the rib from the anterior side okay when you count the rib from the anterior side if there are more than 6 rib okay more than 6 rib then you get a diagnosis now apart from that what are the other tests we do now this is a this is a case of respiratory distress or hypoxia so measure the oxygen saturation by pulse oximetry in fact we always do that right in the beginning because they have included this as the fifth vital sign these days okay so measurement of transcutaneous oxygen saturation is a good indicator of severity now let me give you one example here if the oxygen saturation is more than 95% in room air that is absolutely normal nothing to worry even more than 90 okay, the baby is managing but if it falls you know below than that then it's a problem arrange electrocardiogram or echocardiogram if a baby is suspected to have heart disease if they display arrhythmia or cardiomegaly in the x ray then you have to arrange this type of investigation just to make sure this is not a case of heart disease now the final part is the treatment now in the beginning we should understand something what is happening what is really happening in this case because of the narrowing of the airway the baby is having hypoxia okay uh, so we need to treat this condition there may not be a lot of drugs okay or treatment available for the causative agent uh, except uh, this rsb we have got rivavirin okay but that is also controversial so many doctors they don't want to use that thinking that this the viral infection it will get better by itself okay so let's talk all about these different things the first is 
what are the indications for hospital admission in this condition if oxygen saturation which is monitored by pulse oximetry is less than 92% in room air if the baby is younger than 6 month and unable to drink if there is markedly elevated respiratory rate and if there is history of chronic cardiorespiratory disease these are sick child sick baby so don't discharge them to home admit them in the hospital they may need oxygen therapy and good monitoring now what you do inside the hospital because you are going to be a doctor very soon you are going to work in the hospital so you should know about these things what are you going to do administer supplemental humidified oxygen to maintain the transcutaneous saturation above 92% this is known as oxygen saturation measured by pulse oximetry okay this is measured by pulse oximetry transcutaneous saturation should be above 92% and we give humidified oxygen another is fluid replacement you give enough iv fluid because these babies are breathing very fast they may lose a lot of fluid and fever is also helping in the process third thing the goal of fluid therapy is to replace deficit and provide the maintenance requirement so if the baby has lost a bit of fluid calculate it and replace it otherwise just give maintenance requirement do not give excessive fluid otherwise this baby may suffer from pulmonary edema okay and that is a common mistake we do in the hospital we should not give excessive fluid now what are the other treatment cough up nasal and oral suctioning maybe the nose is blocked and through the oral uh, you know cavity we can uh, suck a little bit deeper as well monitor patient carefully in order to detect apnea remember in a very small baby apnea is one of the complication they may suddenly stop to breathe okay and if nobody is uh, you know detecting that this baby may die even inside the hospital they may die so these days there is there is something known as apnea monitor okay there is a monitor this monitor can monitor almost everything all the vital signs along with that even apnea monitor may be there pay attention to temperature regulation in the very small infant the baby may quickly develop hypothermia so we need to be careful now regarding the specific treatment okay there is a drug called as rivavirin this rivavirin okay yeah, is a specific drug against respiratory syncytial virus so it appears to be a safe option but expensive one so many doctor would argue against it they may argue why to give this drug uh, this virus is not that lethal and the baby may you know recover on its own after few day few days so that is a type of you know argument you can give now what is the role of ciprofloxacin here okay let's go back to the etiology these are this disease is caused by viral infection so ciprofloxacin is antibacterial agent so what is the use of this to answer this question okay you need to be a little bit tricky here you can just answer like this many of the time pneumonia and bronchiolitis cannot be differentiated from each other if it is pneumonia and if i do not give any antibiotic there is high chance of sepsis in the baby okay the baby can deteriorate very fast so just to be on the safe side if i am still doubtful about uh, pneumonia and bronchiolitis it is better to use a broad spectrum antibiotic like ciprofloxacin if you suspect listeria then ampicillin has to be added always remember this uh, ciprofloxacin doesn't cover listeria monocytogens so we need to give ampicillin okay so Uh, at the end this is a short topic so at the end uh, these are the questions which i have uh, you know provided for you and i'm sure uh, these are quite easy for you to 